Hello, everyone. This is Elliot, your host of the Chess for Life Spotlight, where we bring to you stories from around the world of the game of chess being used as a vehicle for impacting lives. Today, I have the distinct pleasure of getting to chat with Carol Ann, and we're going to learn quite a bit today because she has done an amazing job using the game of chess to impact kids' lives. She's written a book about some of these amazing exercises that she has found to do so, and we're going to learn quite a bit more about what is happening in her world. So welcome to the show, Carol. I'm pleased to be here, Elliot. Thank you so much. It's been a joy just simply reading through some of this recent book that you published, which I can't wait to share more about to our <laughs> audience. Before we do that, though, let's get a little bit of background, if you don't mind. But can you tell us, where did you grow up? What led to you yeah. using chess in the classroom? Let's just <laughs> let our audience know, who is Carol Ann? Who is Carol Ann? Carol Ann was born in New York. I was raised in a rather rural section of Brooklyn, uh, Canarsie. It's a little less rural now than it was when I was growing up. I mean, we had horses and farms, you know? So um, that's where I was raised. Um, went to school, graduated college with a BA in English, you know? And I spent many years uh, doing business, writing for daily newspapers and uh, industrial daily newspapers, editors of magazines. I did uh, business development for New York City and New York State. I worked in uh, some nonprofits, um, yeah. but I, I do not do well in the nine to five world. I, I just don't fit. So when I uh, was led to chess, my life took a, a big turn. Wow. Okay. So just pause a second here because this is fascinating. First off, you use two words I don't usually hear together rural and Brooklyn. <laughs> so this certainly harks back to uh, the changes that have gone on that you've been able to see in your journeys. And then you mentioned how you really didn't fit well into the nine to five. Sounds like you were one of the, shall we say, outliers thinking outside the box, looking at things a little differently, being a problem solver. <laughs> oh, yes. So can you share just a little bit more about that experience, you know, dive into those a little deeper and then tie that into what led you to, when did you first learn to play chess and what led you to using chess with kids? Okay. Um, yes. Problem solving. When I worked for New York State Department of Commerce, for example, I was in a division called the Ombudsman Small Business Services uh, division ombudsman solves problems. Uh, small business people from all over the state would call our office. I've got this problem, and we would have to tell them how to solve it. So uh, that was very interesting. I, I enjoyed that. Uh, also, while I was there, I was a woman in business specialist. So I would travel all over the state talking to women who were trying to start their own businesses and Again, trying to help them solve the problems they were encountering. This was long enough ago that women were still considered a minority group in business. Wow. Um, so uh, that's where the problem solving comes in. I, also, the college I went to, St. John's University, uh, I was required to take like 18 credits of philosophy. Yes. Uh, and some of that was logic courses. Um, which were very helpful in, you know, getting you to think in a, a, a nice, neat way. Yeah, so, so deep. you know what, I'll, I'll even add there, it reminds me a little bit of when I took geometry mm -hmm. back in high school, I had the idea at the time, oh, wonderful shapes and all of this, <laughs> just not knowing what it was. And in reality, it was logic and problem solving. And it right. was a wonderful skill that I didn't use in the way I originally imagined it. Now, isn't that the best way? It is. It really is. The surprising moments that you discover these things. It's just a joy when that happens. But I digress. So let's fast forward here. When did you learn to play chess yourself? Ah, you want to hear the whole story? You just want the, the salient details. Well, we've got a little bit of time and we really want to get to what led to the book and all. 
So why don't you pull out the key the key points for us here? I had been watching uh, some people play chess. I knew the moves and rules, but you know I have an inquiring mind. Questions are what I do best. Be careful, I'll start questioning you, Elliot. Um, so I started asking questions that, you know, probably people don't ask a lot, like, why do they have to start uh, on the first and second ranks? Why can't they start in the middle of the board? Why do they have to be placed on these certain squares? Why can't they be half white, half black on the board? How come black doesn't go first? Why does the knight have to move that way? Why can't it move another way? And I wasn't getting real answers to my questions. So I took myself to the Marshall Chess Club and I started taking lessons. I was studying with um, a, a master called Frank Thornley, who you may or may not heard of. He's out of chess for quite a while now. And Frank was part of the first um, uh, business, chess business, that was um, designed to teach people U.S. Chess Masters, Inc. Wow. Uh, and um, that had Frank Donnelly and uh, George Kane and Bruce Pandolfini. So that's how I got into chess, taking wow. those lessons. So you got into chess because you had this inquiry, right? This inquisitiveness about why, which is a wonderful question. Three letters that unlock so much. <laughs> yes. If you ask a question and then truly seek to understand, it's an incredible what it can do. In fact, it's one of the things that I love to do with students, which is don't give answers. Oh, never give answers. Ask questions. Always. Questions and help them learn to figure out and discover things for themselves. Absolutely. It's, in fact, I, I know we're going to talk about some of the chess teaching tips and things like this too. I'm sure we'll get there. But one of the things I oftentimes challenge different coaches is, can you teach lead, coach, a whole session that brings all kinds of new information without ever once telling them one thing. Mm, I love that. It is It is a challenge, right? Because it's so easy to try to say something, but can you turn everything you want to say into a question that leads to the discovery of it? Okay, right. there we go. I love Digress. that. And I just love connecting with other educational professionals who love helping children. So let's move forward though. You learned how to play chess at the Marshall Chess Club, which is a very famous chess club. Bruce okay. Pandolfini, one of the icons in making an impact through chess in kids' lives. Many people might know him from his work most recently, of course, <laughs> with consulting on the Queen's Gambit Netflix series, with his work with Josh Whiteskin and the, you know, searching for Bobby Fischer and so many others. In fact, I grew up as a kid reading <laughs> Pandolfini's chess books. <laughs> and I love that. So... There you were learning about this. What led to you then taking that information? When was your first time using chess with children? Well, it has to do with Bruce, of course, because he saw something in me I did not see in myself at all. I had been helping the, the chess masters uh, with some of the organizational and public relations stuff uh, on a part-time basis. But, you know, he wanted to throw me into the classroom. And at the first place I got my feet wet was at a Montessori school, uh, mm -hmm. Washington uh, uh, Park uh, Montessori School uh, in Manhattan. And I was in the classroom with preschoolers there. And okay. I did that for a, a little while. And mm -hmm. then there was Chess in the Schools, which Bruce initiated, founded, uh, and designed with um, uh, Van Adams. I don't know mm -hmm. if you know Van Adams is or was. He was the president of Mobile South, mm -hmm. and he had money to start things up. And he chose Bruce, and the two of them put their heads together and came yeah. up with chess in the schools. That's and awesome. Bruce yeah. asked me to be one of the uh, very early teachers and threw me into the classrooms. <laughs> and I did that for quite a while, about 10 years. That's awesome. So you were teaching in the classrooms for 10 years from preschool on up, right? As, as I've seen also, many times we create this fake ceiling. Mm. We create an expectation for what kids can or cannot do yes. rather than just allowing their unique abilities to flourish. Yes. And I believe just similarly, chess is a wonderful tool 
that can be used for any age. I Some people ask me, how early would you like to start kids? I say, well, one's probably a good age. <laughs> and, and when I get the puzzled look back, I'm like, it's a toy. Yes. Get it that, that they won't choke on. And when they pick up the pieces, name the pieces, and they are then familiar with the toys. And yes, they can stack the rooks. It's wonderful to do that. <laughs> so, anyway, I agree can... with that. Okay, so let's move actually forward, though, to this book, because I'm just dying to, not really, that's a literal, <laughs> obviously not. Um, I'm absolutely curious. What led to your willingness to take the immense effort it takes to write the book? Being an author myself, I know the time and energy it takes to do this. So what was your driving desire behind writing this book? Actually, the writing was the easy part for me. Once you sit at the city desk of a daily newspaper and there's a deadline, you learn to do that pretty quickly. Okay, so the writing in the, it was not the hard part for me. I um, have a neighbor across the street, Rebecca, uh, and uh, I had taught her younger daughter, Zoe, at uh, the Berkeley Carroll School from, I think it was preschool through fourth grade. That's as high as it was going uh, at the time. Then they go to middle school, et cetera. Uh, and um, so I knew Rebecca, as I she was directly across the street. Rebecca had organized a girls' chess club uh, private lessons in her house where we had a bunch of giggling little girls. Wonderful. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, and um, she's a literary agent. So it was pandemic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had lost all my classes. I had nothing to do. I had already gone through all my files and, you know, given away all the extra mazes and the puzzles and everything yeah. that I had to kids who were bored. Oh. Uh, and she says to me, so what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm thinking about a podcast. And Rebecca said, before the podcast, why don't you do a book? Right. Wow. So there it went. So the neighbor planted the seed, basically. <laughs> right. Right. And you, and you ran with it. Now, one of the things that I noticed as I looked into this book, because it's titled Strategic Moves, right? Mind building chess exercises for kids. So right. can you unpack that a little bit for someone who's hearing this for the first time? Mind building chess exercises for kids. Can you share why you came up with that title? And then an example. It took me longer to pick out the name than to write the book, quite <laughs> frankly. <laughs> Between my publishers and my agent and me, we tossed around literally hundreds of names. My publisher wanted something that would search well. I don't even know what search well means. You know, my, my agent wanted something that would grab them. We went through literally hundreds of names before we could finally agree on that one. And that seemed to cover all the bases. So that's what we went with. So that's how you came up with the title. Now, give an example, mind building exercises, chess exercises, to be specific, what is mm -hmm. one example of that that you have used? Well, we, we started uh, what I thought was a foundational, which isn't exactly chess, except for the fact that it, it took place in a, a chess classroom, uh, after school chess program, and that's how to find your name on a list of, uh, you know, check yourself in uh, for attendance. And once they learn how to do that, I think that sets the stage for everything else that follows. That's why um, I, I figured it so prominently in, in uh, strategic moves. Uh, again, that's not specifically chess, but I think it sets the stage. Sets so, the foundation, right? So you're talking basically young children. Yes. Who may not have some skills that others may take for granted. Right. I'm talking about even pre-preschool, four-year-old. They may not know all the letters of the alphabet yet. Uh, yes. But they they should be able to not even spell their name, but at least to recognize it when they see it. And if they don't, when they start my class, by the second week, they will. They will. <laughs> Excellent. So you're you're teaching them already some core skills. 
what to do, how to find their name, how to search, how to look. In fact, when I was reading the book, I loved the organization that you really talk about in, in those elements. Similar to when I would run classrooms, it's like you come here, your backpacks go here. And, and a favorite <laughs> mantra of mine is a chess game is not over until the pieces are reset, the chairs yes. are pushed in and the room is back in order. <laughs> yes. Right? The chess game's not over at checkmate. For me, as part of life, the don't chess you, game- Don't you love it when they tell you after this resetting the board, I don't know where the bishop is, the bishop's lost. I tell them the bishop does not have feet. Okay? If it was there while you were playing, it is there now. Find it. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> exactly. Well, that that is so beautiful to see. Now, let's move a moment to why chess? Why do you think chess is a great vehicle, you know, for helping kids develop these skills? And, and then, uh, l- yeah, let's just start there now. I have a, a pretty pat answer to that one. Parents okay. have asked me that one before. Uh, if you're a, a parent or a teacher and you're saying, you better learn math because you'll need it to get into college and you need college to get a good job. That's 20 years down the line for a lot of these kids. They don't care. They don't yeah. care about that. They can brush that off. When I tell them, play for the center, develop yeah. pieces, not pawns in the opening, that result is immediate. Yes. Okay? Uh, I can demonstrate that within 15 or 20 minutes. I think that's one of the good things about chess, that the results are immediate. They're not 20 years down the line. So when you're yeah. teaching somebody something, if they apply it or don't apply it, there's another lesson. I don't usually give lectures, except when I'm teaching moves and rules, and then I keep that short. Um, but I give the lesson, I'll walk around the classroom, and I see a game in progress and I can comment on the game in progress and give the lesson individually for each case. Get a lot of aerobic activity that way. Got to move quick. Yeah. I love what you just put at, pointed out, which is in life and especially as parents, we are thinking of this long path. We're taking this young child and thinking about the outcomes and the trajectory, the path that they are on. But to your point, that child usually doesn't care. Doesn't care. <laughs> what matters to them in their short lifespan so far is the more immediate. And so what you're translating is this game of 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes, which in essence is a reflection though of what we are trying to achieve. You're thinking strategically in this right. short space where you are thinking about outcomes and consequences of choices. And at the same time, like you said, you can learn from them, right? We say you can win in chess, at Chess for Life, we say you can win, you can draw, no one wins, or you can learn. There is uh-huh. no loop. <laughs> because a getting checkmated is a information. You're learning from experiencing from it. And so embrace it. I love to tell some kids, oh, do you like to lose? And they're like, uh, no. And I'm like, well, guess what? I like learning. I like getting better. And I've probably been checkmated more times than you've played chess in your life. <laughs> and that's how you get better. There are two things I'd add to that. One is one of my favorite little aphorisms is learn and have fun. Because if they're not having fun in the class, they're not coming back. You know, Absolutely. and I know that it's a market driven. It's not like regular school where they have to come. You have to make sure they come to your classes because they're enjoying it. Okay, if you're just trying to turn out a grandmaster, well, your 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 market is very limited. Yes, absolutely. I completely agree, and it's why I do what I do. Right? It's a uh, it's a joy to see kids develop these skills oh. and grow from there. Um, so, can you share a highlight of, let's say, one of the students you worked with? What's one that stands to mind that you would like to just share? You know, obviously you don't have to say names or not unless it doesn't matter. But, you know, where have you seen this impact kids' lives? Give an example if you can here. Um, well, I can give the, uh, the, the non-famous examples. I've had uh, one of my students, uh, 
got his PhD at the CERN laboratories in, in Germany. Yeah, that's in physics. That's mm -hmm. really something. I have many others that's gotten that have gotten advanced degrees, um, which is very satisfying to me. See them yeah. grow and use the skills that because uh, chess is can be compared to science. And I do that in the book also. It's experimentation and seeing what works and what doesn't work. Huh? But of course, my 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 most famous accomplishment is discovering Fabiano Caruana, which nice. yes, he was in my class uh, at a place I taught a congregation at Elohim. He was also a student at the Berkeley Carroll School, where Bruce and I ran classes together for nearly. Well, I won't use the big number for a long time, uh, but he started taking classes at uh, the temple. The temple is unique because it's not attached to uh, any regular school. They have preschool there, but they draw kids to their after school from mm -hmm. many different schools in the area, public and private. So mm -hmm. when you know when you're teaching a class in a school, the kids know each other. They can sort each other out, who's aggressive, who's passive, who plays well, who doesn't. And, you know, they always want to pick on the kid they think they can beat. Right? Yeah. Normal. But yeah. that's, that's harder to do at a place like a congregation at Elohim because they don't know each other except they're in the same classes together. So he started there with me, and uh, I could see almost immediately uh, that his play was different. I've had other students who came in knowing the moves and rules at four or five years old. Uh, and they did very well in, in chess and even in other areas. But somehow his attention was different. You could see he wasn't interested in joking with the other kids or singing or dancing. He just, he was there to play. He could, I know you know, he could follow his eyes, see what he's considering doing. And uh, I gave him private lessons for a while. Again, I'm not going to say I taught him everything, but I think I put his feet on that logic and problem solving path is what I Absolutely. do best. And then which I is, have, go ahead. Which is wonderful because that's oftentimes what it takes. Like you said early on, kids need to enjoy, have fun, right? It's it's this world of discovery, not this world of you must do. Mm. It's the enjoyment that kids have and they they flourish with it. And for those of you who, listening who might not know, Fabiano Caruana became U.S. champion and competed for the world championship title against Magnus Carlsen. Came very close, went to, went to tie breaks in yeah. order to to go through that match. And Fabiano is just an amazing gentleman who has, who's been a, a very good ambassador for chess, yes. the way that he conducts himself. Yes. So that's, that's beautiful that you had the joy of meeting him at a very young age and helping him along this journey. And anyone who achieves a high level, of course, has many coaches, mentors, and others right. along the journey. I Again, uh, introduced him to Bruce Pandolfini. Yes. And that started the ladder on up from there. There you go. Like we like to say, we're better together. It's one of these skills in the chessboard. The pieces work together in life. When we yes. work together, we can accomplish things better together. So this is wonderful, Carol Ann, seeing this. And then this inspiration during the shutdowns and all to, to publish this book and share really the wisdom that you have gleaned and figured out, discovered, and distill it into a tool that others could then use. What is your hope with this book? What are you hoping to accomplish with it? The book basically is aimed more towards parents, mm -hmm. which is, you know, I'm writing it during the pandemic and afterwards, parents learned more than the kids did during that episode there in terms of what their kids are learning, how they were learning it, and how they would like to change that. And I think uh, parents are taking a much more active role in their children's education these days than they might have in the past. In the past, I think they just relegated it to the system. Mm -hmm. And I think they're much less likely to do that now than they were mm -hmm. in the past. Uh, so um, I think that was my main audience that I was looking for there. But of course, anybody who's teaching just- Wonderful. Teaching and anything. I can say, 
as a chess master who's read hundreds of chess books because I was self-taught in learning the game and being an author myself, I love to read. Right. And I've reviewed many, many different books at different times. But I have to say, as I told you earlier, even before we started this, when I was sent the copy of your book, I picked it up and I could hardly put it down. And that says quite a bit for someone who does look at quite a few different books. I've, I used to write chesshouse.com where we sold thousands of copies and I would look through these. But this book here is indeed one that if if parents are listening to this, I can highly recommend well, thank being you. a chess professional educator. I've personally trained over 10,000 students myself. But the whole goal is to help kids succeed in life. And that is what I believe this book nails. It really does talk about these fundamental habits that you can build and the logic building skills and the problem solving skills and the mindsets of success that are essential. Absolutely. So it was a joy getting started on this book. I can't wait to finish it myself. I've only been able to get through the first hundred and some pages <laughs> so far, <laughs> but it is, it is amazing to do that. And, and while I'm on this, Carol, and where can people find this book or get a copy? Is it, you know, where's the best place to go to follow your work, to, to find this beyond just Google searching? Yeah. Amazon is carrying it. So almost everybody can get to Amazon these days. I don't, I can't name specific bookstores that are carrying it, but, you know, just put my name in on Amazon Perfect. and bingo, it'll come right up. There we go. So Carol Ann Car Caronia, Caronia. Caronia, Carol Ann Caronia, and the book is Strategic Moves, Mind Building Exercises for Kids, which is beautiful. Do you have your own website or place or blog or or or? location people could perhaps connect with you you know i'm going to have to get more tech savvy and i'll tell you <laughs> a secret sooner or later i'm going to have to get a cell phone okay <laughs> that's awesome do you, if you have contact information that you would like us to make available we'll be happy to add that to the links as we post this but okay. in the meantime and just search for this by your name and by the book. And it is really wonderful. Now, before we wrap up here, though, I mm -hmm. want to ask you something. You have done so much already, right? You've had your life where you've been working with the city and with problem solving and supporting women entrepreneurs and others. And that's incredible how you've taken this. And then well over a decade, oh, let's just say a long time, not, not exact years, like you say, <laughs> um, impacting children's lives using the game of chess. Now you've Publish this book, which can be have a life of its own to help others, yes. right? Without it requiring you to take your own time and be limited by that factor. What's next for you? What is your next big accomplishment you would like to uh, work on? Now that I have the system down on how to do a book, I mean, I've written plenty of stuff, and, but it's never come to fruition. I would like mm -hmm. to publish more books, whether they're chess or I'd love to get my fiction published. Um, just, that's my, my focus. And I also like, um, I'll be doing some events. I've done mm -hmm. a few already in live events. Kids will be playing chess. I'll, I'll be doing a little talk, taking yeah. questions. And, uh, I like that. I like doing the podcasts. I'm a little dramatic, you know, so that's I like awesome. doing that. Does that answer your question? It, it does. It sounds to me like that you are moving from your opening into your middle game. <laughs> What's next? Yay. So this has been really just a pleasure getting to meet you, Carol Ann. You know, when I received the, the initial contact and I started learning about this work um, and then seeing your connection with Bruce Pendolfini and, and, and the others that you have impacted already, I just want to say thank you for taking your time to invest in these children's lives. It that is an amazing difference. It's so an absolute people. joy for me. I never, I can't think of one class I came home from where I was upset or crying or too tired to even think. Every class was just a joy and I came home happy. And that, that was really just a wonderful thing in my life. That is awesome. So thank you for sharing your time today with us, Carol Ann. And for those listening, just remember, Click like and subscribe, 
to listen to more and not miss out on many of the stories that we bring to you from around the world where people are using the game of chess, whether to teach children, whether to teach groups, whether to help kids rise up from places of abject lack of opportunity, giving them the skills, making a difference in life. And that's what the Chess for Life Spotlight is all about. Thank you for having me, Elliot.